We think that we make the best recycled plastic combs that money can buy. It all started off with a super simple method, melting bottle tops on a panini press. And eventually we sold enough of them to afford a proper mold so that we could make loads. So we're gonna take you through each evolution in case you wanna try it out for yourselves. This video is sponsored by NordVPN. So for our first technique, and this is actually the first way we ever made cones, is using our good old fashioned panini press. This is like a real DIY method. So if you wanna have a go at this at home, this is probably the safest way. We've got quite a few videos on how we use these to make our projects. Uh, so we'll run through this and you can see how we do it. Based on the size of the plate of the panini press here, we are going for about a 200 by 250 mil sheet. And we're gonna try and keep it about three millimeters thick. So if you work that out using uh, the density formula for HDPE, you can work out we need roughly about 150 grams. So we're gonna chuck a mixture of colors in here. Help if this was on. So we'll start with some blue, chuck in some white, and we'll also use some green. That'll do. We use these Teflon baking sheets. These are like reusable grease proof or baking paper. And this just means we don't have to, well, the baking paper tends to tear a lot when you use it more than once or twice. This stuff lasts for much more uses and we don't have to kind of go through loads and loads of baking paper. Laying all the lids face up, that way the air doesn't get caught. These smaller lids can go inside, that's absolutely fine. Saves a little bit of space. Super. Second sheet on top. Close the press and wait. Now this bit is probably the most satisfying bit because it's the bit you get to start thinking about twisting it and marbling it and making the patterns look really good. I'll show you what it looks like now. Pretty cool already, but we can definitely make it look better. You need gloves for this. Silicone oven mitts is what we use. So it's kind of optional, you don't really have to do it. The benefits of doing it is that it gets any air bubbles out by twisting it and folding it together. You can kind of hear the air bubbles coming out as you do it. And it also makes the patterns look really nice. And you can do it as much as you want. If you want a really blended color, twist a lot. If you don't, just twist it a little bit. It cools pretty quickly, so we're going to put it back on the heat and that way it will mould together nicely. So you might be wondering how we're going to keep the sheet a perfect even thickness because at the moment it's quite, it's quite uneven. You've got some thick spots, you've got some thin spots at the back here. There's lots of different ways you can do this, but the easiest way we found is to get some, something metal that's kind of the thickness you want your piece to be put it on the press, put your sheet back on top, and then essentially you're gonna use the panini press as a sheet press by putting some heavy weight on top, turning it off, and letting it cool down. Now just because this is a DIY comb doesn't mean that we're not gonna make this as high quality as we can. So to keep all of the little holes as repeatable as possible and not get caught up with our scroll saw blade, we're gonna use a drill bit just to get out the middle section of each tine in the comb. Tine? Tooth. That's a fork. Once we've marked all of the hole centers, we take it over to our pillar drill and we use a two and a half mil drill bit to drill each of those out. But you can absolutely do this with a hand drill and it would come out exactly the same. Once we've drilled all the holes, we're gonna cut the rest of the template out and we like using the scroll saw for this because it creates much less dust than something like a bandsaw and it's much easier to collect up and save it for another project. We tend to cut the teeth first because they're a little bit more awkward to cut and that way you can hold the rest of the sheet to stabilize it whilst you're cutting.
Anytime you're cutting plastic with a serrated blade, it will leave a slightly ragged edge. So you can use a utility blade, you can use a chisel or a card scraper to smooth this out. Once we've gone over the entire comb and we're happy with the finish, we take it over to our woolen polishing mop and give it a really quick buff. No compound needed, just the friction, and that makes everything nice and smooth. That technique's perfect if you're trying to give plastic recycling a go or to make a nice little gift. But what was if you wanted to make these on a larger scale and sell them? If we want to start batching these out, we need to have a process that's a lot more efficient. So our injection molding machines are perfect for this. But other than our mum and a few friends saying that these look nice, we have no idea if these are gonna sell well. So we don't really wanna be forking out one or two grand on a really nice mold on something that might not even sell. So as a kind of proof of concept, we're gonna use our water jet cutter to make a nice simple mold that we can use to work out if people like these things and then if they sell well. Because if they do, we can then invest that money into a nicer mold. But until then, this will work perfectly. So the Wazer is a desktop water jet cutter, which uses a combination of abrasive and water to cut through pretty much anything. For our case, we're gonna be using this three mil aluminium because that's what we have lying around. But before that, the most satisfying part Ooh. Nearly. So while we're confident that these combs are gonna make us look absolutely beautiful, what we don't want is people in the background combing through our data and spying on us online. Fortunately, the sponsor of this video can help with just that. So we've all had one of those emails come in claiming that they're coming from someone that we trust, asking us to open an attachment or go to a specific link. Wait, get out of it! Oh, look, a lovely email from my lovely brother. Fortunately, NordVPN's threat protection can recognize malicious links and can scan anything you download for malware. Also, I'm sure that there's a load of people that would reluctantly admit that they're still using the same password across loads of different accounts. But if you use NordVPN's dark web monitor, they'll alert you any time any of your credentials appear on any underground websites. Plus, you can use their free password manager to automatically generate and fill in strong passwords. Just a caveat, Cauldron1 is naturally my password for everything, but embarrassingly, it was my first ever email address. True story. NordVPN are even offering everybody watching this video an exclusive deal, so if you're interested, check out the link in the description below. Plus, you get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so if you don't like it, there is nothing to worry about. Thank you, NordVPN, for sponsoring this video. We're gonna go get that ways ago. So we use that same template as we drew earlier on in our Vectric Aspire software, but we doubled it up so that we can make twice as many and make this a bit more efficient. We used the Wazer software to convert that into code that the machine can read and then got cutting. The only processing we had to do once the plate came out of the Wazer was a little bit of light sanding on the back as you tend to get a bit of a burr as the water cuts through. So the prototype molds that we use are sandwich molds. So basically you have the top plate that has the hole in it that we inject the plastic through. You've got the bottom plate which acts as the backer and the middle plate is the one that we cut out on the Wazer and determines the shape of the product that we're making. So these are our injection molding machines. They work nice and easily. All you need is some shredded plastic. We've done this all already. So you load it into the hopper at the top and then when you're ready you spin the wheel that'll push that down into the heating element and then after about seven or eight minutes it'll be nice and melted you can load in your mold that we've made and then hopefully afterwards we'll have two lovely combs. Right so that's the timer going so now we just have to wait for the plastic. What are you looking at? Oh, you know what you're doing, you little rascal. You're looking at the Wall of Awesome, aren't you? All right, we've got some time to kill, come on. So this is the Wall of Awesome and it's exclusive to the Brotherhood over on Patreon. So you're very welcome to join them. We'd love to have you. You can sign up, we'll pop a link in the description. It's up to you, there's no pressure, but there's other perks. You can hang out on Zoom, there's loads of stuff. Right, plastic's ready, let's go check it out. So the plastic is all lovely and melty, as you can see there. We've got our air filtration on, so I think we're ready to inject. So you just need to get the mold into place. 
you pull the lever, that's locked in, you spin the wheel until it comes to a natural stop. That way you know it's full. You hold it for a few seconds and you can let go, release the lever and you're ready to unclamp. So once those combs are out the mould, there's really not much to do in terms of post-processing. All we have to do is snip them free of that sprue and it's pretty much good to go. So we made these combs for quite a long time. We did them in a couple of different shapes and they actually sold really well, to be fair. There's just a few things that we wanted to improve because at the moment they're quite sort of two-dimensional. So all the edges are quite sharp and they're not particularly ergonomic. Also, we wanted the ability to be able to batch out a lot more at once as well as just improve the overall quality. Oh, it is actually worth mentioning here that you can use the Wazer to cut combs directly out of flat sheets of plastic. We just prefer to use injection molding just because it is a lot quicker and more efficient. So now we've produced quite a few different shaped combs, we went back and tweaked the template to something that we were really happy with, and then we had a full injection mold made out of aluminium. This mold is made by CNC milling, so we can have lots of extra details added in, such as rounded corners and engraving to add branding and extra details. We've also got two different style combs in this one, and we've got multiple of each, so it is quite a big mold, and that does mean that it needs preheating, so we're putting it in the oven, ready to get it warm enough for injection molding. Whilst the mold's heating up, we're shredding down some plastic, and we're doing some white, which comes from DVD cases, which we're gonna cut with a little bit of black shred to make a really nice white marble mix. The injection molding follows the exact same process that we used on the previous comb design, but because this is a bigger mold with more combs, we have two injection ports. Because we're using aluminium for the mold, it means that they cool really quickly, so you can demold them straight away and they are ready to go. The only thing we need to do to these combs are snip off the injection port, as well as a small piece of excess which travels down the air vent at the end of each tooth. So there is our take on a beginner, an intermediate and an advanced recycled plastic comb. And if you like those nice ones enough, they're for sale on our website, brothersmate.com. Tell you what, I'll even chuck a link in the description below just because we're that lovely. He'll do it, not me. <laughs> if you do have a go at the DIY version of our combs, then definitely send us a picture. We love seeing everyone's versions of our combs and you'll probably make it better than we did. 100%. <laughs> a massive thank you to you guys for watching this video. <laughs> I'm not going to stop doing that. Are you? <laughs> another one? Yeah. A massive thank you to... <laughs> a massive thank you to you guys. <laughs> Massive thank you to you guys for watching this video and to everyone over at the Brotherhood. Thank you very much. They're lovely. We I'm love them all. Line now. Yeah, thanks. Anyone else? <laughs> and a massive thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. We love you as always. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Cut. See you later. It all started off. <laughs> it all started off. It all started off. You were doing that on purpose, I can tell you were. It all started off, yeah, super simple method, dropping the super simple method, super simple, super simple catch, super simple catch of a comb. It all started off with a, <laughs> that was so on purpose. <laughs>